and uh, today I'm bringing to you a, a wonderful tale from Chatham, uh, which is a uh, part of uh, the area of Medway in Kent. Uh, it's something that has uh, been bubbling under for a few years now, but uh, has made the news. Well, I say the news, it's made some uh, online uh, threads here and there on uh, random websites. It is, of course, the beloved murderous statue uh, myth. Now, I can tell from your face that uh, you have heard of this. I have um, heard of it, visited it. Yes. Um, so the for, for those who are unaware, there is a statue which does not exactly look like the one on the graphic um I, I assume you did that for safety reasons no absolutely 100 percent. yeah there there is a statue um just near the ancient dockyard in chatham and well it it has frankly a a dark and disturbing legend associated with it which um, by all accounts, though not that many incidents have happened, none, nonetheless, it's still very, very widely known in the Medway towns, isn't it? It is. It's a it's a statue that um, at any time of uh, the year is always uh, bedecked with a with a traffic cone, at least on his head, if not also on his arm. Uh, however often the police or security come to uh, take it down uh, it, it's replaced the same night by local ne'er-do-wells and artists and uh, what some may uh, unfairly call chavs I believe it is, it, it's the local term of course it is um, famously from Chatham in fact um, it is the, uh, uh, the famous statue of Thomas Waghorn uh, Rick, have you uh, have you allowed that? Have you allowed him to tickle you in the ear uh, on your pass on your passage through? Um, it it is it is not something I would I would choose to do. No, um, but it is it is a, a little piece of local history, isn't it? A little piece of of local law. And it's something that that is widely known to those in the Medway towns. And for the most part, you might think this is a, a statue that is like any other and is abused a little bit by the local the local youth, like any other might be. And yet it has a well, there's a dark side to this story, isn't there? There is. And, of course, uh, tales of moving statues really came to the fore because of uh, the Weeping Angels in, in Doctor Who. I don't know if you ever, mm -hmm. if you remember it, Rick, of course. Uh, a beautifully uh, written tale. Very much a villain that was, uh, that started, like all villains do, uh, uh, as a beautiful thing and then was uh, beaten into the ground and then kicked a few times while it was uh, lying there, gasping for breath. But uh, the first uh, couple of appearances really caught the locals' imagination and people became very suspicious and weary around statues that otherwise on a day-to-day -day basis they cared not for. Uh, as I understand it, this is true. It did lead to some some people paying a little bit more attention to the statues in their midst. And this one in Chatham, it turns out, um, might, have, might have been paying attention back. Mm. Uh, oh, our Scottish friend in chat um, has clearly heard of it before because he is right. Um, it did. Uh, is a story that focuses mostly on the youth of the town of Chatham, of course. A very interesting uh, diaspora in their own right Rick. it i mean it certainly is 
a part of the world where youth culture has developed some degree of independence and individuality. Um, not to everybody's delight, it must be said, but certainly it is a, a unique environment for, for the younger crowd. Um, and you can see them loitering around outside the Pentagon and up on Gillingham High Street, and, and you think, okay, um, could do better, perhaps. And it appears that uh, the statue of Thomas Waghorn, according to uh, rumour, also uh, thought the same and decided to take it into his own pointy hands. So as I understand it, every victim of this particular horror um, has been sort of between 18 and 21. Is that right? Mm, very much so. Uh, in fact, the youngest had... It was her 18th birthday, in fact. Okay. Um, they, they die close to the statue of unknown causes. Uh, it isn't entirely obvious what killed them, or at least the medical profession has yet to come to a single diagnosis for all cases. But there is something a little bit odd, which is that, according to the local story, wherever the, the victim lies dead is in direct line of sight with the eyes of the statue. And the victims haven't all fallen dead in the same place. And as you say, this leads people to believe that the statue must move. And yet, any photograph you compare the statue to, it always looks exactly like it would if you were standing in front of it, no matter when the statue was taken, when the picture was taken. Isn't that fascinating? Well, some people say it's a trick of modern photography. Uh, these new phones can uh, can create angles and uh, uh, light variations that aren't really there. But uh, as as you and I have said before, there's there's more to it than that. It's more than just a trick of camera work and such like. There's something that just feels wrong in in the, the gut. And as we've learned here on the Truth Foragers, and as we always say to our snuffling friends. You have to believe your gut more than what your eyes tell you quite often. And th this is it, because people who know the town well, they say, uh, quite rightly, that when they were kids, everybody knew the statue was looking over there or it was looking over there or what have you. And, and everybody says the statue used to look over here and, and look over there. But... You look at the original artist's designs, you look at every photograph ever taken of it, of which there are countless thousands, as oh, you can imagine, thousands. over a long period of time. The statue always appears exactly the same in the photographs and in the, uh, in the original design plans and everything else as it does when you stand in front of it. It is a paradox. It's impossible. And yet... Locals will swear, you know, it used to look towards the dockyard gates or it used to look towards the bridge. It, it, everything about it is, is very mysterious. And we do have, not a huge number, but several somewhat unexplained fatalities. Yes, uh, <clears throat> they're always, um, as you say, 18 to 21-year-olds, always in good health um, when they're when autopsies are taken, there's no underlying health conditions. Some might say it gets cold in the winter in Chatter. If, if young ladies have been drinking, maybe there'll mm. be, you know, there's an underlying heart condition or something might cause something, but there never is. And um, uh, the one thing that's always true is that, um, as you say, as they've died in eye line with the Thomas Waghorn statue. They've also died with their eyes wide open 
in fear, staring at the statue. Yes. Which to me, makes yes, it that, more that than is a another thing. another noticeable thing, and and something that perhaps is is creepy for people, but not necessarily inexplicable. People do sometimes die with their eyes open. Of course. Um, they say that um, that the nights where they, they started doing some um, research to the deaths and the nights and the <laughs> Of course, the police and uh, investigation services would never even consider linking deaths to uh, the Thomas Waghorn statue. But those uh, like us that have a more open mind started researching the times uh, of death and whether uh, the Thomas Waghorn statue was wearing its cone or not at the time. And they did find uh, a correlation, didn't they, Rick? Uh, this is um, perhaps the the underlying premise behind the the people desperately putting the cone back on the statue at all times, because it does appear that if the statue is wearing a cone, it does not kill. Mm. That that is the rumor, anyway, isn't it? It, it ties in. Look, uh, I don't know if you remember if you've been around Chatham uh, in the last few years, but. There has been a lot of graffiti going up on walls, uh, uh, saying things like um, the, co "the cone, the cone is life," and, and such and such like. Um, the cone is safety. Cones save lives. Very similar sort of uh, speaking. It seems like the youth have uh, have taken it as uh, as truth. I suppose that there is a fear among young people in in the town I, I i noted for example that a local uh councillor won a, a significant number of votes among younger residents uh, by promising that if elected they would they would put forward ordinance to make sure that cones could not be removed by the council from the statue as uh, as our viewer realm of rust says the youth are subconsciously placing cones on the statue for protection and uh, more and more i think less subconsciously and more consciously and that councillor as you said uh, got in with the highest number of youth votes there's ever been known for a place like chatham mm. exactly um it's I mean, we can speculate about exactly how this works because obviously the cone doesn't interfere with the statue's gaze directly. But I don't know if you've seen the pictures of the victims. They do look awfully terrified, don't they? The faces. They do. There's a there's a definite fear and terror in their eyes that. Um chills the blood is something that i've not seen many times in my life only when i don't know if you remember that time that we um we traveled um through uh through canada together for that uh for that podcast series we made the road trip series um when mm. we were looking at um the unexplained deaths series if you remember and we, we came across that whole spate of uh, deaths around Toronto with the terror in the eyes. It, it's the closest I could think of it, to be honest. Uh, the Toronto terror was certainly one I remember distinctly from that. So, I mean, is it possible, do you think, that a statue with a traffic cone on its head simply isn't frightening enough to scare someone to death? Um, Thomas Wagon was not a particularly attractive man, but his face alone would not fear, uh, put the fear of God into people and kill them on the spot. It suggests mm. that the man, the, the statue is channeling, in my mind, some supernatural ill intent towards the youth of Chatham. 
But in my mind, he has the there is power at work there that is killing these young people. And I know I've just gone out on a limb here, but this is something that I feel very strongly about as a local angle. Yes. Yes, I, I, I note that one of our, our people in chat has suggested that it could be the weight of the cone or perhaps mm. the sand within it to keep it upright um, that in some way pushes it down into the plinth. Maybe that's what, what matters. Does the cone cover his eyes? Does it break the uh, the eye line perhaps sometimes? It's, I mean, it is, it is frankly a baffling mystery. And I, I've seen enough locally here to think that that it is it is not something that can necessarily be easily tested or evaluated. I mean, let's face it, we're not going to march 19-year-olds past that statue after dark back and forth in the hope that one of them will suddenly end up dead. Um, that would be not entirely inappropriate actually for the youth of Chatham but but nonetheless it, it's 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 far too far to go I feel mm. speaking of that too far to go of course um, we both know and uh, the, but the, the viewers may not that Thomas Waghorn was an English sailor and a Navy officer uh, who uh, promoted the idea of a, a different route uh, from Great Britain to India at the time Whereas uh, many steamships having to go around the Cape of Good Hope, dangerous route as we all know, mm. very long route. He um, he produced a route to cut across uh, through Egypt. This was before the Suez Canal, so he cut the yes. um, he cut the distance by half at the time. It's understandable why they put a statue of him there. Um, so for me, I. It's hard for me to understand why the statue would have this uh, resentment towards the young. Maybe it's their lack of uh, get up and go. Maybe he's angry at their work shy ethic. Maybe he is. Uh... Maybe. I mean, not all Waghorn's ideas were a winner, to be fair. Of course, of course. He also proposed um, a passage to the Pacific by digging a canal from Calais to Vladivostok which truthfully i i think would be uh, overly ambitious shall we say i think i think very very reasonably very reasonably so um there are questions from chat rick you're uh, you're very knowledgeable when it comes to uh, airplanes and everything uh, aerial um have there been complaints of weird things happening in airplanes flying overhead we've talked about it before in the past about electromagnetics the bad juju if, if nothing else affecting flight plans and such like uh, yes and and it, it is worth pointing out of course that the area is directly on several major flight corridors for airlines um as far as as far as we can tell as far as i can i can ascertain um the the aircraft traveling overhead if they encounter any such issues they don't rise to the standard where they are widely reported doesn't mean they couldn't happen of course but but perhaps there is say a maximum range for the effect and aircraft are too high i i, I couldn't possibly tell you i'm i'm more a, a feet on the ground man myself and uh, as uh, as our scottish friend has asked uh, teenagers around the statue with conclusive results without dying looking at the teenagers themselves locally um, there has been talk that uh, an increased intake of uh, illegal substances especially uh, natural uh, a bush growing substances um, they're, they're, they're swearing on those to to counteract uh, waghorns uh, uh, powers and there has been uh, that is the main reason for the increased uptake in smoking such a herb uh, absolutely and i mean i don't know to what extent that can possibly make a difference but if it were me i would probably think that staying 
well away from the statue might be the wiser course of action. There have been seven uh, deaths, of course not attributed to this officially. There's always a reason, as we always know. There's always an official answer to everything. But uh, the community, the foraging community and similar communities have attributed seven deaths to the murderous mm. Thomas Waghorn statue. Uh, to, to sum things up, uh, my good friend Rick, do you believe that uh, the statue of uh, Thomas Waghorn is a murderous statue and has been killing the uh, youth of Chatham? We are coming to the, the crux of the matter, are we not? Do are. I believe? Um, if I were hearing this from a place I did not know, I would remain completely sceptical. But given that I've been able to examine it myself, see it myself, speak to people in the community extensively, we have foragers in our in our in our community who live local to it and have documented things. Every attempt I have made to to take a photograph of this and see if it moves and relocates has been unhelpful. But I've taken images of this statue and then saved one in front of me, knowing that it was looking to the left in that picture. And then I came back and found that in the picture it was looking right. And the news was reporting another death. So I'm afraid to say, much as I do not have a single shred of scientific explanation for this, I believe. Rick Bishop, you, uh, you surprised me in a, in a very good way. And uh, I am, um, it is no surprise, I, I believe too, I agree with you. There's just too much good old fashioned evidence. Word of mouth, uh, talk of the town, ear to the ground, that it can be anything other than belief. As uh, Roman Frost says, Google is indeed totally covering it up. Croy is correct. It is a conspiracy. This is one of the bigger conspiracies we've uncovered this evening, I believe. The um, the cone theory makes total sense. The uh, smoking of the herb as protection makes total sense for those that know of Chatham. Um, the, the photographic evidence you talk about is mind-blowing to me. There's, in my mind, there is nothing that could convince me otherwise than the Thomas Waghorn statue is murdering 18 to 21 year olds. And even though I am no longer 21, if I walked through that town and saw no cone on the statue's head, I would give it a wide berth. A very wise man. It's those sort of decisions are why you've made it to your age, Rick, and you're still thriving. Ah, yes. Yes, given the, the life you and I both lead. We have to be careful. We'll turn it over to chat uh, one more time to our viewers. And uh, it appears that uh, there is a very similar viewpoint. So for the last time, I shall build up to the final decision. And our viewers believe. Very wise. Foragers have snuffled and they found their truth truffles, Rick. <laughs>